you don't really know you're alive, do you, until you meet someone like Leanne Mowat. I mean, amazing. Her life expectancy may be only a few more years. She's got a wee young one there coming up three years of age. And it turns out that, well, he hasn't got cystic fibrosis, but he's got diabetes. So some people have a really hard row. I tell you what, it made me really nervous concert on the Sunday. And uh, I think she might have been a wee bit shocked when I mentioned something about stripping with the naughty boys, but it was only my shirt that came off, all right? So I'm not going to do anything drastic down there. And talking about losing my shirt, the last time that happened was actually at the Southland Racing Club where we were backing Panic and Pete. And we want to get it right. We want to actually back a winner. Even if it only pays a dollar fifty or something, I want a winner. So let's see if we can do it on the Greyhounds. We've done the horse thing, we've done the trotter and the galloper, trying to win the Invercargill Cup. We've got two second last. This time I've got to do better, surely. Back on the home territory, the old greyhounds. How are you going? Let's go and find the trainer and see if we can get a winner for tomorrow. Come on. Mervyn Eid. You trainers, you eat pretty late in the morning. Have you had breakfast yet? No, it's just <laughs> a long day, uh, Jared, getting through all these. Oh, this is good stuff. What do you got in here? That's uh, basically what you would have for breakfast, uh, Jared. It's all sorts of cereals. Cornies, wheat bix. Oh yes, it's a high energy feed. Oh. And what's this? Tomato sauce. No, you really, you've not, staggered me. Not, <laughs> not quite tomato sauce. We don't give them that sort of luxury. But I'm um, going to have a nosy at it. It's 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 oil, it's Jared. Oil. Oh no, you can have it. It's it's yours. Have it back. <laughs> it, it it just makes them encourage them encourages them to drink a bit and and um, also good for their coat. Okay, we'll put a bit of warm water in, Jared, and, and um, it it's sort of helps with the dehydration, keeps their fluid levels up. What is, what's that thing on the end of the uh, mic there? Well, that's a very scientific thing for keeping the wind level down, the noise out of the mic, but I don't really need it for inside, so I could, you know, just put it wherever. Well, I'd be very careful where you put it, Jared. The dogs would love that for breakfast. <laughs> would they? <laughs> Is this Kerbo? This is Kerbo. Oh. <laughs> yep. He's a real he's really on turbo, isn't he? Yes. Oh god. He's gonna win for us? Oh well I um we'd like to think so, Jared. Well let's find out if he's sound first. We've gotta try and make sure that he's he's sound enough, uh, Jared, for just racing. So we basically just manipulate the joins. You're checking that, that neck's not out of place. That's correct. Come up here so like that. So they actually get out of slightly out of joint without yeah. being all that noticeable. Well when when you look at the pressure on them racing. You look at about 40 mile an hour and bumping and crashing each other. So really there's going to be risk of injuries and, and, and necks and backs coming out. It's just like any athlete. All, all good through there? Yes, uh, so far. He's not a bad sort of an animal. Just do the, the back. And the little joints in the vertebrae can get out of place. Yes, right? the, the whole back. We just picked the dog up. Like so. Good boy. Just relax. Good Give him a boy. click. Hear that? Yeah. And we do the same that side. And that puts the back back in. That does the back right through to the neck, right through to say the hips. So basically the whole, if there's a, any sort of um, misalignment, it's back in. Great. And he's all sound as a whistle. Hope so, yeah. He's ready to win. How do you get those young dogs vicious on the lure? Well, at an early age, Jared, we start on a bit of wool or a bit of fluff or something soft, basically to get them mouthing it and bring that instinct out of them. And then you tease them? We tease them like hell and <laughs> really go for it and hopefully it takes them on to bigger and brighter things. This is where we find out how fit he is. Yep, this is uh, the crunch, Jared, as far as the weight goes. I mean, the variation of one and a half kilos on the side of his last weight, if we're um, beyond that, we're in trouble. They won't let you start. We're out, and a $50 fine, so the trainer would be happy if that happened. Well, his last weight was, what, 28.6. We're up to 29.5, but um, we'll make an allowance for his breakfast, so um, he, he's probably about spot on, Jared. What weight does he race best at? About the 28.5. 28.5? Yeah. We're about the kilo over, so... How can you get him down before race day? Well, uh, that'll be just basically fluids. I hope. Sure now. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> this must be the hardest part for them, getting them to come out of that box. Yes, it is, Jared. This is the uh, real crucial element of greyhound racing. And Turbo, they tell me, used to turn around. He did. They come they, out backwards. He, he was too smart. He <laughs> thought he was going to cheat. <laughs> He's got one more training run before the race. Yes, he has. 
couple of hundred metres? Yes. What for? Well, it's just a good hard hit out for a final preparation for the races on Friday, Jerry. Good hard hit out. That's what I want to hear, Kerbo. You knock him dead. You got that? Good boy. Oh, he's keen. He wants it. He, he wants, wants it for it. breakfast. Here we go. Here's Kerbo's final trial. This is the big one. Okay, Merv. What are we What are we expecting in this big last trial? To get through it very uh, safely, Jared. We're going to time him. Uh, no, we just want him to have a good hard hit out, and uh, time's irrelevant on a day like this. And you'll be able to tell whether he's going well. I will do. Good stuff. Let's do it, Kerbo. Right. Put the energy into it. At what speed were they reaching? Probably uh, just a tick over 40 mile an hour. And they've got a different way of running to any other dog, haven't they? Yes, they have. They're more like a, uh, a cheetah. <laughs> yes, he's come through that not bad, Jared. He was running dead straight. He wasn't bending or leaning or running crooked. No, he's uh, spot on and, and the lure went straight too, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so he's all set. We're going to win on Friday? Give it a good shot. Going to beat second last? I hope so. Break my duck, there'll please. Be, there'll be some disappointed owners if he... <laughs> yes, does something to me when those greyhounds are pumping up the straight. The meeting's on at 3.30 at Ascot Park and let's hope that Kerbo, the turbo, can really do it for me and break my duck of second last.